Hi everyone. Today a video on aromatic chemistry and specifically the reactions of arenes, nitration and acylation. So the first kind of reactivity we can think of is simply combustion. So like alkanes and, and, and uh, things like that, they will uh, burn in air. Um, the difference is that they burn in air with a very, very smoky flame. And the reason why we have much more smoky flame as compared to just burning alkanes, for example, is because there's a much higher C to H ratio compared to alkanes. Think of benzene as C6H6 versus the equivalent alkane hexane C6H40. So there's usually unburnt carbon remaining when they when they burn in air, and this produces soot. So a really smoky flame suggests an aromatic compound. So if you have a question that asks, and tells you that they've burnt this and it ends up with a smoky flame, it suggests that it's an aromatic compound uh, and not an aliphatic compound like an alkane. So as we said in the previous video, that while benzene is a saturated molecule, it doesn't undergo addition reactions like an alkene. And the reason for this is because we don't want to break the delocalization. We don't want to lose this delocalization energy, this real stability of the molecule because of the, the delocalized electrons. And so the most typical reaction is something that we call an electrophilic substitution reaction. So this is replacing an H atom with the electrophile. And overall, we leave the aromatic system unchanged. If we did an addition reaction, the, arom the aromatic delocalization would be disrupted and this would require a really large input of energy, the, the equivalent of the delocalized energy, to destroy that aromatic system. The reason it doesn't is because it's so stable to have that delocalization. It's such an energy buyback. So the delocalized system of the aromatic ring is very rich in electron density. We have our delocalized pi system above and below the ring, and hence it attracts electrophiles. So our, our benzene ring is acting as a nucleophile, an electron pair donor, our electrophile here is our electron pair acceptor. And so the general mechanism always follows the same arrow pushing, and we'll see a couple of examples in this video. It's important to realize that while the actual sort of benzene ring and the substituents on it that we're dealing with might change, and the electrophile might change, the actual mechanism is always the same. The chemistry doesn't change. And so this general mechanism is going to occur in both nitration and Fiedel-Crafts acylation reactions. And so the general mechanism is as follows. We have our nucleophilic benzene ring, which is going to use its pi system, its, its delocalized pi system as, as the nucleophilic part of it. We draw an arrow starting from the double bond, going to the electrophile. Then we've broken the aromaticity. We can break it temporarily. What we don't want to do is break it completely, like an addition reaction, and leave it overall uh, changed. We want to make sure that overall the aromaticity hasn't been touched, so while we have to break it in one step, the next step requires us reforming it. And the way that we reform it is to lose the hydrogen atom or whatever carbon atom our electrophile is attached to. So we draw an arrow going from our CH bond, falling back down into the CC bond to show the formation of a double bond and the loss of an H plus cation. And so overall, we've, we've replaced the hydrogen on that carbon with the electrophile hence an electrophilic substitution reaction. So the first specific type of reaction is called a nitration reaction. This is how we're going to substitute a nitro group, an NO2 group, onto one of the carbon atoms in the ring. So the electrophile is an NO2 plus ion, something called a nitronium ion. And the way that we make it is we mix together concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, this might look like a slightly weird reaction, we're taking two acids and reacting them together, but the sulfuric acid is actually a slightly stronger acid than the nitric acid is, so this is an acid-base reaction. So the sulfuric acid donates a proton to the nitric acid, which acts as a base in this case, and we end up forming the H uh, SO4- ion and the H2NO3 plus ion. And then all we have to do to get to the nitronium ion is we lose a molecule of water. And so check with your example whether you need to know the mechanism for this or whether you just need to be able to write the equation. But if you do need to know the mechanism, I've drawn out here sulfuric acid and nitric acid in their full displayed forms. So sulfuric acid has two SO double bonds and then two SOH single bonds. And then nitric acid is shown as well. 
remember we said the sulfuric acid is, is, the, uh, is the acid here, it's going to donate its proton. The basic bit of the nitric acid is the, is the, uh, the lone pair on that oxygen atom that I've shown. So we can draw our arrow from the oxygen lone pair to the delta positive hydrogen atom. And then the hydrogen has already got one bond already made, so we have to break the bond. And the bond that we break is that OH bond, an arrow from the centre of that bond, ending up on the electronegative oxygen. Then the bit that we're interested in is that H2NO3 plus ion. And to lose water, what we'll all we simply do is we take the kind of nucleophilic part of that molecule, which is the O minus the negatively charged oxygen, bring that electron pair down, an arrow from the negative charge to the NO bond, that forms an NO double bond. And then nitrogen already has four bonds, we can't make any more, and so we have to kick off one of the one of the other bonds, and what we do is the uh, the N water bond essentially. So we have an arrow starting from the middle of that NO bond, ending up at the positively charged oxygen, and that produces the loss of water. And we end up producing this nitronium ion. And the nitronium ion is a linear molecule, an NO2 plus ion. So if we then think about drawing our mechanism. There's two ways we can draw it, and again, check with your exam board which, which way is the best way to draw it. You can either draw it using the localised structure, so three double bonds, three single bonds, or you can draw it using the kind of the true delocalised structure with the ring in the middle of the hexagon. So if we draw it using the localised structure, we have an arrow from our nucleophilic benzene ring from, a, uh, from one of the double bonds to the NO2. Now sometimes you can draw out the nitronium ion as, a, as the full displayed formula. If you draw it out as the full displayed formula, you need to show an arrow going to the positively charged nitrogen. But then again, nitrogen can only have four bonds maximum, so we have to break one of the bonds. So we have an arrow going from one of the NO double bonds, breaking it open and ending up uh, with a negative charge on the oxygen. If you write it out just simply as NO2 though, like I have shown in the mechanism here, you can just draw an arrow from the double bond to the electrophilic NO2 molecule. Like addition reaction with alkenes, when we break open this double bond, the NO2 is going to attach onto one carbon, the other carbon is going to be left electron deficient. And so this is what we've shown here, the positive charge on one carbon, the NO2 attaching onto the other. And so again, remember we've broken the delocalization here, that's a big energy input, but we can do it temporarily if we then reform it in the next step. So the step is to lose that H plus ion, lose that hydrogen, and so we have an arrow going from the CH bond falling down into the middle of that CC single bond to generate the carbon-carbon double bond, reform the delocalization, the aromaticity, and we've substituted our hydrogen atom for an NO2 group. We've made nitrobenzene. The alternative method is to use the, the delocalized structure. Now, in this case, we need to have an arrow going from the center of that delocalized ring to the electrophilic NO2 molecule. Then Rather than using the, the sort of double bonds where we've broken one of those, we have to have a broken ring, broken circle in the middle to denote that we've broken that aromaticity. And you have to be really careful in drawing it. And so what happens is I have the carbon atom that I've attached my NO2 onto. That's my saturated carbon atom. From the carbon atom either side of that, that's where the uh, aromatist, that's where the, 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 the delocalization sort of still exists where that ring still exists. And so we start a broken ring, started from that adjacent carbon atom, going all the way around to the carbon atom before the one that we've added the NO2 onto. And then because we've got a positive charge, we've got a positive charge in the center of the ring. Then the second step is exactly the same. We want to reform that delocalization, reform the aromatic molecule. And so we lose our proton. So an arrow from the CH bond, ending up at the middle of that ring, the positive charge. And so we reform our aromaticity, we now draw a full circle to denote that it's fully delocalized, and we have our NO2, our nitro group. Now, nitrated arenes are really important, and nitration is a, a really important step in the production of explosives such as TNT. So TNT stands for trinitrotoluene. So essentially what's happened here is you've taken toluene, toluene is just methyl benzene, and you've done that nitration reaction three times. And I've also drawn the, uh, the reaction here for what happens when TNT explodes. So it reacts with oxygen and it ends up producing nitrogen, CO2 and water. And typically things that have nitro groups tend to be pretty explosive because it can end up forming these really stable molecules that give out lots of energy when they form, such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen. 
And nitration is also the first step in making aromatic amines. So once we've got the nitro group on there, that's quite synthetically useful because we can turn the nitro group into an amine group, as we've seen in some previous videos where we take concentrated HCl and tin, and this is a reduction, the addition of, of hydrogen, it removes the oxygen atoms, adds hydrogen atoms, and so the reduction turns our nitro group into an amine. And we've taken our, uh, we've now produced an aromatic amine. And these aromatic amines are very, very useful because they can be used to make industrial dyes, these things that are called diazo dyes. The other type of reactivity that we need to know the mechanism for is something called a Friedel Crafts acylation. So you can imagine that what's also very useful, putting a nitro group on there is very useful. We can make nitro, uh, nitro benzenes useful for explosives. We can also reduce it down to, to aromatic amines. But it would, also, it would also be really, really useful to be able to put um, alkyl groups onto your benzene ring. That's obviously very important for organic synthesis. But there's a problem. If we just try to alkylate using alcohol-based electrophiles, so for example, if we just make a carbocation, this often isn't the best way to do it. The reason is that um, we can often end up with something called polyalkylation, so very similar to what we've seen when, if you saw my videos on um, amines, the idea that amines can kind of react again and again and again and end up forming primary to secondary to tertiary to quaternary ammonium salts. Polyalkylation would mean that you'd do the same alkylation reaction over and over and over again and end up with a product that you didn't want. Also, carbon cations can also rearrange themselves. So if you wanted a very specific type of alcohol group, sometimes carbocations can, can rearrange into a different molecule. And so you'd end up with not the right alcohol group attached on. So the alternative is to carry out an acylation reaction. That is to put an acyl group on a CO double bond connected to the R group we want, rather than just the R group from a carbocation. Now this uses aluminium chloride as a catalyst, AlCl3. And this allows us to substitute an acyl group, RCO, for the hydrogen atom on the ring. Now the reaction occurs because aluminium trichloride is electron deficient. Our aluminium has three electrons, it can form three covalent bonds, so we end up having six valence electrons. We've got an empty p orbital on the, uh, on the aluminium. It's electron deficient, it wants to accept uh, electrons from somewhere. And so it will readily accept a lone pair from the chlorine atom of an acyl chloride. And this ends up forming a dative and coordinate bond. Both electrons from that chlorine are being given to the aluminium. The aluminium hasn't got any electrons to share anymore. And so again, you can just write out an equation for it. I've also shown the sort of curly arrow mechanism for it here. We have our lone pair on the oxygen, which can push down to form a carbon-oxygen triple bond. And in doing that, we need to break one of the bonds. Carbon already has the four bonds. So we have to break the bond, which is the carbon-chlorine bond. And that essentially what ends up forming would be a chlorine anion, a chloride anion, sorry. Uh, and this can form a dative covalent bond by attacking into, by donating its lone pair of electrons into the empty p orbital. And so we end up forming AlCl4. This anion is happy. It's now got eight valence electrons on the aluminium. And we end up forming this thing called the acillium ion. So we have a carbon-oxygen triple bond. Our oxygen has got three bonds, so it's positively charged. We also have our R group of interest attached on. And notice as well, like the nitronium ion, that the, uh, the acillium ion is also linear. So the mechanism then looks exactly the same as we've seen before. And we're only going to show it here using the single and double bonds, the localized structure. So we have our arrow from one of the double bonds, the nucleophilic part, to the, where the triple bond starts. The reason why we can't attack the positively charged oxygen uh, directly is because that already has eight electrons. What I've not shown here is that there's still a lone pair on that oxygen. In the acyl chloride that we started with, our oxygen has two lone pairs. We've used one of them to make this triple bond, so we still have a lone pair. So the oxygen has eight electrons. It isn't electron deficient. What we do have, though, is an electro, uh, electronegative oxygen atom bonded to a carbon atom. So the carbon atom is delta positive. That's our electrophilic part. So we have our arrow from the double bond to that triply bound carbon atom, the delta plus carbon. And then again, because the carbon already has four bonds, we have to break a bond. And the one that breaks is one of the pi components of that triple bond. And so we have an arrow starting from the triple bond, ending up on the electronegative oxygen. In doing this, we have then ended up with our acyl group attached on to one of the carbons. 
since we've broken the double bond, another one of the carbons um, is, is electron deficient, has a positive charge on it. And so our second step is the same as we've seen before. We lose the hydrogen atom that we also have attached to that carbon. So an arrow from the CH bond down to the center of that carbon-carbon bond to show a double bond reforming. And we've reformed the aromaticity. We've reformed that delocalization. Because remember, we don't want to break the delocalization forever. If we break it in one step, we must reform it in the next. Now, this is really useful. It's useful to have the acylated product, to have that acyl group, the C double bond OR on there. But also it's very useful because we can get back down to the original just alkyl group that we wanted in the first place by doing a reduction. And this time we use either zinc or mercury with HCl. Uh, and this again removes the oxygens and replaces them with hydrogen. And so this takes the acyl group down to the alkyl group. And so we've managed to get an alkyl group on without having to do an alkylation, which could have rearrangements or polyalkylation. This is a much better way to do it. But as I said, the mechanism looks exactly the same. So time to have a go. The questions are to give the reagents and conditions for the formation of nitrobenzene from benzene, and to give the mechanism, and then a possible synthesis of uh, phenylethene, often called styrene, is shown. And so to give the mechanism for the first reaction there from ethanol chloride and aluminium trichloride and benzene. So if you want to have a go, pause the video and the answers will be on the next slide. So the first question was all about the nitration of benzene. So the first thing we need to do is to show what kind of uh, mechanism this is. This is an electrophilic aromatic substitution. To form our electrophile, the nitronium ion, we need to react together concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid in one to one ratio. This ends up producing the HSO4 minus ion and the H2NO3 plus ion. It's an acid base reaction, sulfuric acid donating one of the protons to the nitric acid acting as the base. And then from that H2NO3 plus ion, we lose water minus H2O and we form the nitronium ion, NO2 plus. And the mechanism is the one we've been seeing all along here. I'm going to draw it out using the delocalized structure just to give you an example of what that looks like. So we have an arrow from our nucleophilic part, which is the, the uh, delocalized pi system of the benzene. So from the center of that ring to the electrophile, the NO2 plus. Then we've broken the aromaticity, so we need to reform it in the next step. And so we lose the hydrogen that we've got on that carbon atom we've attached the nitro group on. So an arrow from the CH bond falling back in and going to the positive charge in the center of that uh, hexagon. And remember that when we break that, that ring open, when we draw it in this case, we have to draw this kind of uh, broken circle, this kind of semicircle almost, starting from the adjacent carbons either side of the carbon we've attached our NO2 onto. So we lose our proton and then we end up reforming the aromaticity, reforming the delocalization, and we've substituted our NO2 group onto it. Second question was all about the first step of that synthesis of styrene. And so we have our ethanol chloride, uh, acid chloride, we have aluminium trichloride. Remember that the aluminium trichloride is uh, electron deficient, it only has six valence electrons, so it will accept the chlorine. Sometimes it's called a halogen carrier. It takes away the halogen from the acyl chloride. And in doing this, we end up forming uh, a cilium ion at our AlCl4 minus. So this is an, again an example of an electrophilic aromatic substitution. And the mechanism looks largely the same. This time I'm going to show it using the localized structure. So an arrow from our double bond going to not the positive charged oxygen in this case, because we have eight electrons on that already, but to the carbon atom that's triply bonded. And then the carbon atom already has four bonds. So we need to break one. We break one of the pi bonds of that triple bond. So an arrow from triple bond ending up on the electronegative oxygen. And then again, we've broken the aromaticity, we've broken the delocalization, so we need to reform it. And so the way we do that is to remove our proton. So an arrow going from that CH bond to the middle of that CC bond next to it to show the formation of that double bond. Now, if you're interested, I've also shown the steps of how to get to styrene from there. So we have our isolated product. The next step is to turn this essentially what is a ketone down into an alcohol. If you remember from the alcohols video, you can turn a ketone to an alcohol using a reducing agent of sodium borohydride. And then if you want to get from an alcohol to an alkene, 
if you've seen the videos on um, either alcohols or alkenes, we can know that we can do an acid catalyzed dehydration. So in the presence of acid, it protonates the, uh, the alcohol group, the OH group, turns it into an OH2. And then we can lose a hydrogen atom along with that, regenerate the acid catalyst and end up forming an alkene. And that is phenol ethene or styrene. So thank you for watching. You can find many more videos like this on my YouTube channel. If you found the video helpful, please leave a review on one of my tuition websites. I offer tuition for chemistry, and if you're interested, then check out the tuition pages. And if you need any more help with your chemistry, always feel free to drop me an email. I'll be happy to help.